Right now, I feel like there's a big misconception in the car community, and it's been going on for quite a while, and that misconception is people feel like if they do something different, that's gonna make their build that much better, but if you do something that's quote unquote different, and it looks like trash, you're not gonna have a good build. So if you do something different, you better do it right. And now, you're watching the brand new toilet paper roll that's too large to fit on the toilet paper roll dispenser of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. I really appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Welcome back. So what we're going to do right now and what we're going to do in this video is I got to continue working on the Kenny Lever suspension setup on Project Pepto. Over the weekend, I came in, I got that horizontal bar welded in. Well, it's just tacked up. I also blocked off the shock towers with brand new sheet metal, so it's going to be nice and strong. So as of now, I got to get that welding finalized and then we'll go from there. So here's how we look right now. I think it's pretty solid. What I used as the sheet metal was just eighth inch sheet metal. Some people suggested quarter and I don't know. I don't know if that's necessary to get that crazy with this stuff. Also, I wanted to point out that the factory gusset is still in here. What I did is I just cut a big slit right here and then I slid the sheet metal behind it and then that's where this weld comes in. So this sheet metal is solid behind that. The gusset is still connected. The welds look pretty solid. I'm not a professional welder, but they'll do. So I think my next step is to actually mock up the system and kind of see where it goes. And I think the best way for me to set the height is, well, right now the system is gonna be at full extension because the shocks are fully extended. So they're only gonna get smaller. So if I weld them in, they're fully extended with no weight on the control arms. And then when I put those up rods in or those vertical rods, then there's gonna get some weight on there. And then we're gonna see what it does. My thinking is right now the car is gonna be too high, but as soon as I get them on there, once I see that it's too high, I can just cut off from the vertical arms, these arms right here. And again, this is just the bottom of the regular old EG shock, so that'll fit in the Integra. This vertical rod, if the car is too tall, I can just cut off as much as the car is too tall by from there, and then we'll be good to go. And also, I was thinking with these vertical rods that I can finalize the welding at the bottom because if I need to trim them, I'll trim them from the top, even though I have to bevel the top again. But that's all right. I'm not going to disconnect this. It'll be a lot less work for me to just weld them together and finalize the bottoms. Man, so it looks pretty good. What I ended up doing was two passes when I welded it because there was that little gap. So at first I kind of just stitched it all the way around, welded it nice. And then afterwards I just did a big slog, a big snail right on top of it. So that'll be real good for strength and you always really want to make sure the metal's getting nice and hot so that way the weld is penetrating nicely. And again, I'm not a professional welder. This is just how I look at it. So right now I want to get the system completely put together so that way I can tack it down. And oh yeah, I haven't even showed you the new brackets, dude. They look so good. Man, so here they are. We're just going to call these the pivot plates and these are laser cut. You know, I had to give them the design, give them all the specifics that I wanted. These are one off completely custom. You can't buy these anywhere. The only place that you can get them is if you get them made. And it wasn't used with a plasma table. When you use a plasma table, there's a lot of slag that happens, but to get them laser cut, has this perfectly nice clean edge right out of the machine. And then this, this was the little reference piece that we were using in the last video. So like I was saying, this is four inches from here to here, four inches from there to there. And then I got these holes. So as you can see from the center of this hole to the center of that hole is four inches. And then the center of this hole to the center of that hole is four inches because I knew I wanted four inches of travel or for this to pivot that much to be four inches out from one another. So the way that this works is this goes one on one side, one on the other. So right now I'm going to kind of get the system built so that way I can show you how it works. So we have the two coming up 
This one's gonna be coming from that vertical bar. This is just a regular old spherical hind joint. And then this one, this isn't gonna be the final one. This is gonna be another mock-up piece. What I have for the pivot joint is gonna be an actual rod end, so that way it doesn't have this kind of swivel in it. And that'll be nice and good and keep the whole entire system solid. So this can only go on one way. Up top we have our half inch hole and I have my half inch bolt and that half inch is for the QA1 shock. This is half inch, this is half inch and on the bottom, these are gonna be going upwards at the bottom. So let me just get it thrown together and then you'll get the idea. So here's what it looks like assembled. And then keep in mind right now, the shock is fully extended. It's not gonna be any further from where it is now. So this is gonna be the suspension fully relaxed or when the tire is at full decompression, when the tire is as low as it's ever gonna be. So that means this pivot will only go upwards from here. So this clearance where it's real close, that's okay because it's not gonna get any closer. So this is gonna be welded to that bar across. This is also gonna be welded to the bar across. And this right here is gonna come from that vertical rod. Also, I wanted to point out that I made a little mark on each one of these, and then this was backed out five turns from right here, and then this was backed out nine turns from right here, and the other side is the exact same way, and those are just nice middle grounds that I picked. I started with them both being nine because that was exactly halfway of all the threads. There's 18 threads from the nut being all the way up at the top, but then as it sits in the car, see right here, I thought it sat a little bit better if this was five and then this was nine. So there's no handbook or no directions that come with anything when you're doing something completely from scratch. I just always focus and make sure that whatever I'm doing, I just do it on one side, I do it on the other side. And then as far as the threads, I kind of just like to go to a middle ground. That way I can adjust up if I need to and I can adjust down if I need to. So let's get this one thrown in the car just like the other one and then figure out where we're gonna tack these down. And so I actually went through and I tacked it and then I a little more than tacked it down I kind of finalized some of the stuff see right there looking pretty good man so I'm gonna be adding gussets and also there was probably gonna be a support bar 245 degree bars coming off for that horizontal bar but I don't know yet man Let's just see if the system works. Keep in mind, there's gonna be some kind of weird pivot to the triangle because this point right here is a spherical joint and it's gonna be a regular old end link. So I'm gonna eliminate any play that it could possibly have. But that end link is gonna be the same exact thread pitch and same exact size as this heim joint. So that means I could build the system as it is and before I take it on the road, I'm just gonna to need to swap out those two little end links. Let's see if it works, man. So right now I have a jack underneath the tow hook so the wheels are all the way down meaning the shocks are fully decompressed. As soon as the car starts to go down we're going to see these rods come up and hopefully it's going to pivot around this triangle and then we're going to see the shocks compress. So that's sitting at ride height now, I just kind of want to simulate going over some bumps, making sure each side's doing its thing, and again, this is all going to be supported before I drive, so let's see. Man, that's a workout. 
So that is how it's done. And now some of that noise, keep in mind, there's all kind of loose brackets underneath the car from the fuel cell being out. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I got a new fuel cell. So I'll be putting that in real soon and hopefully to get this car fired up and idling on its own. And now I'm just so pumped to drive it. Dude, that suspension is so sick. Again, I'm gonna reinforce it a little more, go over all those welds one more time because I just did everything while I was in there. So I didn't want it to get too hot. So now I'm gonna fully take the system apart and then tidy up all those welds and then we'll see what else happens. But man, that's freaking sick, dude. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Did you understand the system all along or did seeing it really make you understand what's gonna happen now? So we kind of have a couple hour jump in the video. It's a couple hours from the last clip. So what I went ahead and I did is I finalized some of these welds. I put in this little 90 degree gusset so that way this is gonna be nice and strong. I don't know if you can tell by the way this sounds, but man, that is super solid. So that is not gonna go anywhere. That's perfect. And what I think I'm gonna do is I just had some pipe left over. I gotta actually buy some more pipe, but I was just messing around with how I wanna make the mount or the fish mount. And this is kind of what I want to do and have something along the lines of this. So that's, you can see that's a nice, nice and tight joint and that's a 45 degree angle. So if I have something right here and then something right there going down to a base plate over here and a base plate over there. And then I don't know if I feel like I need something to kind of come up from over here to tie it together as far as front and back. I don't really know. I feel like the system is plenty strong enough and overkill is not necessarily the right way to go about it because every single thing that I'm adding is weight in the rear. And with this car being turbo, high horsepower, front wheel drive, I don't want to add too much weight in the rear that is unnecessary. So I guess I'm going to see what I think in the next video. So then I'm going to get everything finalized. Then we got to get it primed to make sure that it doesn't rust. And I don't know what color I'm going to paint it yet. Leave in the comment section below what color you think I should paint the bars. I'm not talking the entire car. I'm just talking about the bar. You think I should just do basic gloss black because keep in mind all this hardware is zinc plated So I think that looks real nice. That's probably what I'm gonna do unless you guys have a better opinion So thank you guys so much for watching really happy with the progress for today like this video comment subscribe do all the stuff You know it is YouTube. I'm um,